Hey, Judy, check this out. Ah, oh, William, that's nothing. I got one, too. <laughs> and we're going to scare up a new episode of Garden Time next. Welcome to Garden Time and Happy Halloween. We are out here at Garden Fever and you know just because it's fall doesn't mean things have to be scary. <laughs> and coming up in the show today we'll be giving you tips about putting compost on your garden for the winter time. And we're also going to show you how to get your house plants that have been outside ready and come inside for the winter. But first we go on a mushroom hunt. So it is a real delight to me to be out here in one of the many beautiful forests of the Pacific Northwest and I'm with Leah. So Leah, tell me who you are with and why we're out here. <laughs> so hi, my name is Leah Bendlin and uh, I'm here with the Oregon Mycological Society and we are out here doing a field trip looking for all of the different mushrooms that we can find. Hopefully finding some really good edibles, learning about habitat, and then also just learning about all of the cool species that we're finding. So, you know, we've been out here a while and doing some filming and watching people, you know, search for mushrooms. And my mind kept telling me, ah, oh, there's so many dangerous ones, but there really are some that are delicious that you can get right out here in the wild. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There's, there's a lot of mycophobia out there <laughs> and, and a lot of, um, you know, a lot of fear of mushrooms, but, it's okay, you can touch all of the mushrooms that are out there. You're not gonna get poisoned just by touching them. Right. And there's a lot of delicious edibles out there that you can also find. And we have a couple of them right here. And they're freakishly beautiful, first of all. That's yeah. what I noticed straight away. But tell me about these two and, and what you do with them. Okay, so this one right here is the cauliflower mushroom. Wow. Somebody found this straight out of the car, which is a pretty lucky find. Um, and this is a delicious edible mushroom. Looks like wavy egg noodles. One of the great things about this mushroom is that it has no poisonous lookalikes. It oh, is nice. really easy to ID and it is delicious. So even a simple person like me could figure that one out if I find yeah. that, that one's okay. If you find something that looks like this, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, um, and then could you hold this? Sure I will. Okay, so then we also have the lobster mushroom right here. Bright orange mushroom that Beautiful. is a tasty edible. Um, it grows actually on another mushroom that is pretty bland called Russula brevipes, which is just a white, plain, big looking mushroom and completely deforms it. This is where the gills would be on that Russula and it has completely like fused them shut and it turns it a rather bland mushroom into a rather tasty wow. mushroom. And so there, there are things that we have to be aware of, but one of the great things about the Mycological Society is you can actually be a novice and learn yeah, about sure. stuff from y'all. Yeah, yeah, we do classes. We do a beginner and intermediate ID class. Um, we do a fall mushroom show. Which and... is happening soon, isn't it? I've got this right here. <laughs> yes, it's happening tomorrow on Sunday. Um, so here's our flyer for the fall mushroom show. We're going to have speakers that will get, I'll be giving a presentation on uh, common fall mushrooms and their lookalikes. We'll have a presentation on um, how to get started mushrooming, some poison information, some cooking information. We'll have book sales and the main feature is probably thousands of different mushrooms that will be on display nice. and identified so that you can see some of the beautiful variety that's out there. So now we, we were out here but this is a very specific thing and you knew where to come out to look for this kind of stuff but if you're on your own what what is it that you're looking for to find mushrooms? Sure, so uh, people are very secretive about their spots because it can take many years to find a good spot. Right. Um, and we're lucky enough that Paul shared his spot with us today. But you are looking for certain kinds of trees. Um, our state mushroom, which is the Pacific Golden Chanterelle, associates generally with dug fir trees. And we have an awful lot of dug right, fir trees right. in Oregon. Um, however, you also need it to be at certain elevations and certain temperatures. So the season starts high and then goes low as the, uh, as the season goes on and you get cooler temperatures in lower lands. Um, so it, the, the spots where you find them actually vary mm, over time. And then there, there 
you should be aware of maybe checking around before you just go out randomly searching. For sure. So different places require different permitting systems. So wherever you're thinking about going, you need to check with the, the agency that covers that. Like if you're going on private land, you need to ask someone first. If you are going out to national forests, there are generally free uh, personal use permits. Um, and then some state forests, you can go out and you actually don't need a permit as, at all as long as you are collecting only for personal use Excellent. and only in limited amounts. Well, you know, we cover so many flowers and trees and shrubs, but this is another wonderful, beautiful, and often edible part of nature. So if you'd like more information on this great event happening tomorrow, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Go out and enjoy something maybe new in your life. Thank you so much, Leah. Yeah, thank you. And get out there and enjoy some mushrooms. Right. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Your car does more than get you where you need to go. It helps you live the life you love. At Capital Subaru, we're 100% dedicated to finding what works for you. And with a wide selection, personalized service, and plenty of perks, you won't need to go anywhere else to find it. Let us help you make the most of your day. Come shop your way on the parkway. Take on any fall adventure in the smart and versatile new 2017 Subaru Outback 3.6R Limited. Lease it now, just $260 per month, only at Capital. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Garden Time is going to Europe, and you can join us. Next August, join Garden Time as we tour gardens in London, Paris, and Belgium. See world-famous gardens like Hampton Court, Kew, Sissinghurst, and Great Dixter, and Monet's Water Lily Garden in France. We'll also see sites in London and Paris, like the Tower Bridge and the Eiffel Tower. We'll also stop in the Champagne area of France, tour a Belgian brewery, castle gardens, and a winery. We'll also have a river cruise. Our final stop is a visit to the floral carpet in Brussels. We'll be staying in four-star hotels with 24 of your meals and your airfare included. Mark your calendar for next August for this gardener's bucket list tour and then sign up. And if you book now, you'll save $300 per person. Visit the Garden Time website and click on the tours link for all the details. And we'll see you in Europe. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Well, we all know that it is that time of year when we start thinking about the holidays, and I'm in one of the two beautiful growing facilities that Al's has, and I'm here with Dorothy. And Dorothy, once again, you guys have an amazing selection of poinsettias available coming up. Thank you. And about how many, first of all, do you grow? How many varieties? We grow about 40 wow. varieties. Wow. We grow about 40,000 different pieces. Oh my goodness. Oh my of goodness. those 40 varieties, yes. And you know, it really takes a lot of effort and time and work to make these as beautiful as they are. So give me some hints on like like temperature and, and light and stuff like that. How do you control that? Well, we, we do a lot of praying. <laughs> uh, we control with our greenhouse. We have furnaces and we have um, fans to help cool in the summer. We start these actually in June. Wow. A lot of these that you're seeing started in June and now we're trying to finish them off. So we go from wanting to cool them a lot to keep keeping them heated right, now. Right, right, exactly, because the temperatures have set, changed since June. And then I've always wondered too about 
lighting. A lot of times I see a, a shade cloth and then no shade. Is, is that, how do you control that then? Uh, we actually manually pull shade wow. over these in the summer when it's heat, when they very first come in and they are babies and they are very uh, tender. We have shade cloth that we keep the extra sunlight out. And then we take that off at a certain time when we feel like the daylight is short enough that the extra sun's not gonna hurt us any. And then we also shade these to help color them, if that's what you're talking about, and later on. Okay, so you've mentioned shade cloth, but I've heard that you guys do also something called black cloth? Correct. So the color that you're seeing here is not natural. And we have done that on purpose because we have our evening of lights and we want poinsettias in our stores earlier. We want them to be colored earlier. So we've done something called black clothing, which uh, gives these plants an extra three to four hours of night, really? dark, total darkness. Wow. Right. And the benefit of that then is that's what changes their color in a certain time frame. Correct. Poinsettias are naturally uh, photoperiodic, which means they require a certain amount of darkness to color up. And so what we do is we give them that darkness a few weeks early so that they color a few weeks early. This one right here, this one's a natural one. This one has not been black clothed, but yet this one behind it has wow. been black clothed for two weeks ahead of that. And so it will be colored two weeks before this one. So it really is a way that you guys can actually make the plants available at the time you need them available for the clients. Correct, correct. Wonderful. And then when we get them home, we don't have to do all that kind of black topping and stuff, right? We can, there's a way to take care of them. Right. So poinsettias, once you get them home, they're really very easy. They're a house plant. They like it 65 to 70, which is a lot like what we right. like it yeah. at home and they like the sunlight so anything with a bright area um, with a big window a bright window um, they're good there they don't like drafts so you want to keep them away from the front door and they don't like extreme heat so where they would look really really neat on your mantle or by your fireplace right that's probably not, not the best where you spot want to do for them so much huh right <laughs> well now i'm going to switch over here and talk to mark and mark Every year you have this wonderful festival going on. It's coming up very, very soon, and it's happening at all four of your locations, right? That's right. It's called our Evening of Lights. It's where we get all the stores decorated for Christmas. We get all the lights put out, and we, we just roll it out. We open things up for customers. So this year they're going to be November 2nd, 3rd, and 4th and 11th. We have four stores. So we yep. have four days this year. Wonderful. And you really, it's not like you just put a bunch of stuff aside and then pull it out every year. You guys no. go all out and get new stuff for all the decorations. Yeah, so in each store we have designer decorated trees. And so our buyer goes out over a year in advance and specially buys all these ornaments and wow. decorations for all the trees. And then we have award-winning designers that are literally come in and they set up the trees. So in one store we'll have 15 designer decorated wow. trees. And what I love about going to the stores at this time of year is you all tie in the poinsettias that match the decorations for the trees so it really helps people who want to do the same thing in their own house but they don't know how which color of poinsettia now they do right we try to do that to so everyone can relate to their right. home right. whatever their taste is we have a tree and a poinsettia for them so mark at your gresham location the people there can actually go back and, and go into these growing areas and look at how it's done that's right on our evening of lights Date, which is November 11th in uh -huh. Gresham. We have two tours set up so we can take people back into the greenhouses and we give them behind the scenes tour so they can see a massive crop of poinsettias and see we talk about everything that goes into making that crop happen. Wonderful. Well you know every single year you would think that I would get used to going to Evening of Lights but every year it takes my breath away. Now they have an extra location so you can go four times and look at four different places and always look at the poinsettias as well because they are super beautiful and thank you so much for your time today Dorothy. Thank you Mark. For more information, gardentime.tv, we'll click over to their website. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com. Here's the secret to a beautiful, long-lasting deck with the warmth of wood. Don't use wood. 
Upgrade to composite decking. Fiberon is available in five distinct styles and 20 gorgeous colors and never needs sanding, staining, or refinishing. You'll spend more time enjoying your deck and less time maintaining it. Stain and fade resistant, composite decking won't decay like wood. And no need to worry about splinters or nail pops. For wood looks that last, you can choose long-lasting, low-maintenance composite decking. Learn more at FiberonDecking.com. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Judy, yep. do you remember when I asked you if you liked me? I mean, if you really liked me? Yeah, I liked you on Facebook. Yeah, well, I need you to do that again. Well, we really need everyone to like the new Facebook page for Garden Time. So you just go to gardentime.tv and click on the Facebook icon and like us again for our brand new page. I'm out at Grimm Fuel Company with Jeff Grimm. And Jeff, I see you guys are blowing out some, um, some compost for fall. And so why is it such a good time to do that? Oh, well, it's a good idea to put the mulch out this time of year to help protect the plants and the root systems from the winters that uh, is right around the corner. We're liable to get some cold temperatures and those uh, a layer of mulch will help keep those things warm and keep the plants from getting damaged. Also this time of year with all the rains that we're starting to have finally, it uh, helps with the erosion control. The rain comes down and hits soil and if you don't have something on there, you get the rain impacts the soil and it starts washing it away. If you have a layer of compost down there, it helps protect that soil and keep it from eroding. Yeah, you know, also we you do get so much compaction, it's nice to have it down there to get some extra, just um, extra soil there. That's true. And the micro macronutrients that are in the compost that we're blowing, we're, we're installing garden mulch compost. It's a yard, all organic compost made from the stuff that comes into our yard debris oh. recycling center today. So it's loaded with macro and micronutrients and that will help as the rains leach down through that, some of those micronutrients will leach into the soil and be absorbed by the plants and help feed the plants uh, throughout the winter and then in, into the spring give them a head start. We can also install other products like the traditional bark dusts and stuff like that also. Yeah, you really have a big array of different kind of mulches and bark mulches to put down. So really coming out and you have, um, you have the samples there that you can see all the different kind of supplies. Yeah, we have the hemlocks that are sliver free. You can get those in a reddish brown color that's kind of traditional or the dark brown shades. But also the fir bark dust, which is a little more budget conscious. It's a little, little less expensive than the hemlocks and all those things will give the same benefits with the exception of the micro macronutrients. Right. The bark dust, they don't really have a lot of, uh, you know, macro micronutrients in them, but it still gives you that protection. Yeah, and it looks so nice and really weed protection or weed prevention too. It's really something in suppression. That's, yeah, that's a good point. And what we've done here, we've cleaned up all the beds. We put down a pre-emergent so that those weed seeds that we haven't, you know, that you know are still in the soil right, right. that we couldn't get out are still in there. And as soon as we get a little bit more rain, those guys are gonna wanna start germinating. And so we put down the pre-emergent to keep that from happening and give us some protection from the weeds for the coming months. Yeah, and so you guys do come out. I mean, we can hire you to come out to my house and blow everything. I don't have to be shoveling it, which is a really nice service. Yeah, it's great, especially for old guys with uh, bad backs <laughs> like myself. Yeah, we can. Uh, we have the U-Haul Center here in Tualatin, where people can come up and pick up their uh, pickup load of their own uh, mulch or their own bark dust, or we can deliver it in bulk, dump it in your driveway, and you do all the work. Or we can get the blower trucks out, and you don't have to do anything but sit back and watch them work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have it all done. I mean, we're all busy people now, so it's really nice to call, make an appointment with your company and have them come out. Yeah, it's a great service. It's a great way to go. Jeff, speaking of the weather change, you have another product that a lot of people can use. Yeah, we also have firewood. We yeah. got some nice, well-seasoned uh, fir and uh, uh, mixed wood. That's a mix of maple, alder, and fir. And it's well-seasoned, ready to go, stored under cover. And we have lots and lots of that that's ready to go, along with our home heating oils for people with the uh, that need the home heating oils. You know, you can go to gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to Grimm's website and you can call them up and get all the information. Jeff, so, thanks so much, it's really been interesting. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for bringing the nice weather with you too. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful.
Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. The holidays have arrived at Garden Gallery Ironworks. Stop by our store in Hubbard and see the season in a whole new light. We have a wide selection of new and unusual gift ideas. From stocking stuffers and hostess gifts to large decor pieces, we have thousands of items to choose from. And don't forget the outdoors. We have gifts for the gardeners too. We also have a large selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items for you to take home. Give the gift they'll thank you for from Garden Gallery Ironworks. Our customers are looking for the most modern appliances generally, and we always seem to find that with standard. If we go to a big box store, they may have one or two of the manufacturers, but they don't have the full spectrum. Any product we could think of needing for our home, we know we can find it here. If we have a specific request from a customer, we know that we can go beyond our specifications and find exactly what they're looking for. Since 1947, we set the standard, standard TV and appliance. Well, this time of year is the time to bring the house plants that have been on the deck on the patio back into the house. I'm with Tom from Bonite, and Tom, we really have to do a little bit of maintenance on those house plants to bring them back in. Yep, yep. A lot of people have, are moving from the spring and summer gardening, and now, of course, with the cooler weather, we're coming indoors. Uh, and that means bringing those tender house plants from the outdoor patio into the home. Uh, and there is some, some care factor involved there, and a lot of it is insect activity, sure. especially bringing them in the home. And we've got a handful of natural and chemical products that will help the customer do that. Uh, well, I know when I bring mine in, I kind of bring them in overnight a couple times, a couple days, and then finally bring them indoors. So you're kind of acclimatizing them back into our houses, which are a little warmer, a little darker. Yep. Um, so we want to do that for the health of the plant, and maybe wash them down first. Excellent idea. Very good. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll knock down some of of those insects but really as an insurance program we should use some other kind of um, method. Yeah I think as soon as we move them indoors or before we move them indoors do that wash down effect mm -hmm. that will remove uh, some of the insect activity that's there and then um, when we do see insect activity once they're in the doors uh, we can look at something like insecticidal soap which sure. we could call completely natural so if you're looking for that softer approach to insect control both chewing and sucking insects there's nothing better than insecticidal soap. Oh, perfect, yeah. yeah. And we always want to read the labels. I'll yep. just tell you what to do on that. Yeah, you're going to laugh at me, but I always say labels the law. No, And it really so is. So Very make true. sure the house plant, the insect is on the back of this label, uh, as well as the other labels we're going to show you, and then you're good to go. Ah, excellent. What yeah. else you have? Okay, so um, sticking with the natural side of things, we have the Bonide Midex. And if you look closely at the active ingredients here, this is essential oils. So uh, again, a softer approach to insect control, both chewing and sucking. Mites are on the label, mm. believe it or not. Um, and being essential oils, it's basically going to smother the insect egg, the larva, or the adult. And being an oil, uh, repetitive application is recommended. Okay. Stay consistent, stay on it, sure. and you'll have good control. Oh, perfect. Okay. Right. The last natural product that I'll show you is our Bonim. Now this is two actives. This will be sulfur and a pyrethrin. So with the pyrethrin, you're gonna get nice, quick knockdown action, okay? But still very soft approach. And then with the sulfur, you're gonna have a twofold. Sulfur is a really, really good miticide. So again, mite control okay. here. Mm -hmm. And then being a sulfur, it'll give you some fungicidal properties. Oh, because so you never know. So any diseases, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. That is good. And then what okay. else you got? And then um, for uh, the chemical side of things, and I always sell this one. This is our systemic houseplant insect control. This is the lazy person's way oh, to, to control. Come on, Tom. Okay, the busy. The busy. <laughs> the busy. That's a better way to say it. But this is a granule, and okay. it's a granular insecticide. So it's two tablespoons of this per 
one gallon size of pot. Okay, so, so if we have like a that. one gallon nursery pot, mm -hmm. two tablespoons, top dress, boom, you're done for a lengthy amount of time. Because uh, the plant actually takes it up. So really it's acting 24 hours a day. Good, good word, it takes it up. So we call that systemic action. Mm -hmm. It'll translocate from the roots to the top of the plant. Ah, so, so. that's how the control is. Yep. Oh, excellent. Okay, and then the last is our eight, again, Bonide product, eight insect home and garden. This is a thrin and uh, a pyrethrin. So um, on the chemical side, but a very soft approach. Um, can't call it natural because, because it is a chemical, but as a foliar application, give you a quick knockdown action. Uh, so if you see something that's a blow up and you just want to get it, get rid of it right away, this is the one to use. This is the one, yep. Uh, so Tom, for any of these products, do we have to reapply often? Great question. So um, we talked at length about some of the natural products. So mm -hmm. the Midex is in my hand, um, it, the insecticidal soap, the Bonim, um, really good uh, control for insect, like I said, chewing and sucking, but it's a natural. So we're gonna have to stay on it. We're gonna have to reapply maybe every two, possibly three weeks. Okay. So be consistent with it. Now, when you switch to the chemical side of it, like our um, granular uh, houseplant insect control, um, this is something that's gonna last longer. Okay. So this product here, you probably get maybe four to six weeks of control out of it. And then the um, eight would be uh, maybe reapply every four weeks. Oh, wow, so okay. that's a long time. Yeah, so some things to think about before you buy the products, natural, stay consistent, reapply sooner, chemical, a little bit longer action. Oh, that's really good information. And so where can we find your products? Well, most of the Bonide products are in the Northwest. Uh, we do have a dealer locator. So just go to www.bonide.com, check the dealer locator. Uh, and then always call before, because uh, the products do fly off the shelf, sure. and uh, we'd hate for you to run to the store and it'd be out. So, right. yep. Uh, so all kind of good information. So go to your independent garden centers, ask their staff about what you can do to make your house plants that back into the house and have them healthy for you all winter time. Thanks so much. You bet. Well, we wanted to thank you for watching Garden Time today, and we also wanted to give a big thank you to Garden Fever for letting us hang out here. And we also want to wish everyone a happy Halloween, and if you're going out trick-or-treating, don't forget to be safe. <laughs> so for more information on today's show or any of the past episodes, we always want you to go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. It was the summer of my freshman year. I was 14 years old when I got really interested in doing a kid starter project and I decided to help out a 150 kindergartners by raising a school supply drive. A lot of kids, they feel like they can't make a difference, but really any kid can make a difference through Kid Starter. Kid Starter mobilizes students to make an impact for issues they care about, providing them with resources and coaching to impact local and global causes. Kid Starter, developing future leaders through service and action. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.